So starting from Paleocene epoch. In Paleocene epoch, you have some forms known as Placy Adapi forms. These are considered to be some of the earliest ancestor of primates. After Paleocene, and one of the example here of this Placy Adapi forms is Purgatorius. So this is the earliest primate looking mammal, Purgatorius. See after Paleocene you have Eocene epoch. In Eocene epoch you have Adapi forms which are U primates. U means true primates these are. So under this U primates you have two forms Adapi forms, Omomi forms. Omomi forms. See this Adapi forms are somewhat considered to be ancestors of lemurs. These Omomi forms are considered to be the ancestors of tarsiers and some monkeys and apes. An example of this U primate is Darwinius Massillae, which is also known as Ida. So please take down. Yes, then. Yes, sir. Omomi forms. O M O M Y I forms. Tarsiers. In Oligocene epoch, <coughs> early anthropoids. came into existence. An example here is Aegyptopithecus. Z-E-U-X-I-S. These are the considered to be ancestors of old world monkeys, apes and human. So after Oligocene epoch you have Miocene epoch which is considered to be the age of apes. Here you can take Proconsul. Proconsuls are believed to be the common ancestor. Common ancestor of apes, great apes, big apes and human beings. Pliocene epoch, early hominins came into existence example Australopithecus afferensis known as Lucy the grandmother of human evolution or grandmother of human beings so uh, that is a Pleo Pleistocene fossil they will say that uh, here a Pleocene uh, early hominins which is Australopithecus the first ancestor of human beings came into existence here this date is always revised it was revised several times but anyway we can write this in Pliocene epoch early hominins Australopithecus afferensis Proconsul Proconsuls So after Pliocene, you have Pleistocene, in which all the uh, Homo, Australopithecus, different varieties, and then even Homo also came into existence. So we'll allot Pleistocene to Homo. Not only afferences, there are many species here. Likewise, in every category, the ones which we have in our syllabus, all. The, Genus Australopithecus was given, afferences 
Africanus, Ethiopithecus, Boci, Robustus, all these are given Ramidus. So those we will study, we will study Australopithecus. This is the overall account. You have a topic, tertiary and quaternary fossils. So if the topic is, never they have asked, if they ask, you have the answer. I will give a printout of this one also. So, so these are all tertiary, tertiary fossils. Yes. Quaternary starts with the Pleistocene epoch. So Pleistocene belongs to Homo, Homo genus. Genus Homo came into existence. So here you can write Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Neanderthals. Cro-Magnon, Grimaldi, Chancellide, who are the Homo sapiens. They are modern Homo sapiens of there. So after this, it is Holocene. So just to show more spe specialization or more uh, further progressment, I'll write Homo sapiens. So this tertiary and quaternary fossil primates we have seen we are in the pre, we are in the era cenozoic era is a larger time period period is smaller time period and much smaller time period is epoch so these are the three things which we are concerned with there are some things like eon and other things also but not necessary so you have 66 million years to present you have tertiary period and quaternary period Tertiary period, Paleocene, Eocene, Oligo, Mio, and Pleo. So, if you want to remember this, you can write a PO, MP. This you can remember as a PH. So, Pleocene comes first, followed by Pleistocene. Pleistocene is the Great Ice Age. So, this Cenozoic era is considered to be the era of mammals. So, before Cenozoic, there is Mesozoic where vertebrates came into existence except mammals and Cenozoic era is considered to be the era of mammals and also you can see primates also evolved here only. So it is the era of mammals and primates. Pleistocene you can see that how human being came into existence. So that is the era of human being or epoch of human being. So quaternary we, we are present in Holocene and I'm, I already said that not to be particular about time frames. So here you have some forms like Plessy Adapi forms which are the earliest ancestors of primate mammals. Example is Purgatorius. Here you have U primates in Eocene. U means true. So true primates. Adapi forms are the ancestors of lemurs. Omomi forms are the ancestors of Tarsiers, monkeys and apes. One form example is Darwinius Messile, which is also popularly known as Ida. Then you have Oligocene, early anthropoids. Yesterday I have seen a Prosimians Anthropoidea. You get my point. So in anthropoids, which are old world monkeys, apes and humans, these are considered to be the ancestor of these forms, which is Aegyptopithecus Geuxis. And then in Miocene, which is the age of apes, Proconsul, which is a common ancestor for great apes. Great apes are chimpanzee, gorilla, all these bonobos, orangutan, all these are considered to be great apes. Great apes is bigger size and human beings. Pliocene is early hominins. Early hominin is Australopithecus afarensis, which is Lucy. Then in Pleistocene, all Homo genus like Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthals, Homo sapiens came into existence and Homo holocene, little bit more advancement I have I have shown, Homo sapiens, sapiens, you get my point. I will connect these dots in much clear manner when we are discussing chronology, maybe tomorrow only we will discuss that depending on how much we complete today. I will right from the beginning, I will establish a link not concerning the 
time frame, but I'll establish the limit. Starting from Azoic era, then Archaeozoic, we have Proterozoic, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. What happened in all these eras, I will discuss so that you will have an overall view. We will also discuss in particular with the human evolution taking from Proconsuls. So, all these are yet to come. Please be patient. Yes. Selecting the right optional subject for the UPSC exam can be a daunting task, especially if you're aiming to succeed on your first attempt. But what if there's a crucial element that could make all the difference? That element is continuous answer writing practice at Vijeta IES Academy. Our Anthropology Optional Foundation program offers a comprehensive approach. Not only will you delve deeply into the subject matter, but you will also engage in daily and weekly answer writing exercises. Each of your answers will be meticulously reviewed and critiqued by N.P. Kishore sir, ensuring you receive personalized feedback to enhance your skills. This approach has already helped many students achieve impressive marks and ranks, such as Akanksha Singh, 311 marks in Anthro CSE 2022. Chaudhary Shipra, Vijay Kumar, 307 marks in Anthro CSE 2022. Ajin Kumar, who cracked UPSC in his first attempt, and many more. With daily feedback and structured practice, you will be well prepared to succeed in the UPSC examination. With our focused feedback and structured practice, you'll be well equipped to improve your performance and boost your chances of securing a top rank in the CSE. Don't wait any longer. Enroll in Vijeta IS Academy today and unlock the proven success formula for conquering the UPSC exam.